Hey, Hannah. What's that thing called where art becomes a way to disrupt the systems of oppression? The race thing? Yeah, that's it. What's that thing called? And who gave it to you? Do you mock it because of its vanguard benefits? Did you take one down and pass it around like bread at a table of your ancestors and relatives? How much did it cost? And are you still paying for it? What's your monthly freedom or oppression, traditional or open to suggestions on something a little more fresh and new? Do people even care? How often are you heard, I mean really heard, whether within or without of your tribe, the popular population where you reside, sharing inherited physical and biological traits? It's race. Everybody. I'm Tori Paxson. And I'm Hina Faraja. And this is The Race Thing, where race is a problem all over the world. Period. Just talking to community members, policymakers, and activists to peel back the layers of racism. If that's something you like, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And give this video a like. Art has so many avenues, such as poetry, music, theater, um, even visual arts. But today, specifically, what we're talking about is art in social justice uh, platforms. And so to get some more perspective, we talked to Miriam Morin. She's a visual artist, and much of her work can be seen locally in the form of murals. So, like, how does art inspire you? Wow. Art has always been, I always admired art since I was a young kid. Um, my mom, my dad, they collect a lot of art pieces, but it was like my dad, he's like the beginning of the start of me learning about art because he always would sketch different horses and different type of things. And I'm like, how did he do that? You know, he's just his dad, you know? So he would show me different things. And then of course his sisters as well love art and my aunt's actually an art professor. So art has always been in my family. But what inspired me the most was the tribulations I went through, just like Frida Kahlo, she was in an accident and I was in a car accident with my two children and it didn't kind of spark. And so I had to be by myself, you know, in a room trying to recover. I had to learn how to like, OK, how do I cope with this pain, the things I'm feeling emotionally? And art was like therapeutic for me. So that's how it kind of inspired me to like keep doing that and then now it's therapeutic for others um when you were creating the black lives matter mirror uh, memorial mural <laughs> mural thank you mm. I did when, you were, <laughs> <laughs> when you were creating it what was your thought process like it really wasn't like even a thinking process it was just more of like a feeling situation when you see the protest that's going on and you see there's a lot of things that's still going on to this day you would think will change already but it's sad when you see the injustice, you know, especially with police brutality and those of color who are still struggling to this day for just to have the respect that you can't like just walk down the street without being, pulled, you know, being stopped or driving a car without getting pulled over because of the color of your skin. And it something was led to me to just design something. And I was like, am I really going to do this? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. So I created something that was to honor those before us who fought the good fight and shine light through their their gifts and their ways of trying to have, just like Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, I wanted to make sure that we think about how far we came and how right now we still have a voice, we still have a job to do to make sure that everybody's getting treated equally. It's just human rights, you know? So I wanted to design this and I also wanted to start showing others that there's not so much negative going on, but it's also positive. There's also unity in all of us, whether it be black, brown, it doesn't matter what color you are. It's like we all coming together to show others that everybody matters, yes, but black lives do matter because it's still going on to this day and justice is going on. So I wanted to definitely pay tribute to that. I feel like art is our culture, right? Like part of culture is how we express ourselves artistically. And so it's interesting to see that even though within black and brown cultures, mm -hmm. art is such a huge part of life, like in the way we dress, in the way that um, you see like fashion designers talking about how it connects them to their roots by being expressive in those ways. Um, and yet we don't see a lot of representation 
um, as far as black and brown artists go. We see a lot of white representation and everything seems to be very European centric. Yeah. Like even if you um, look at our interview with Miss Phillips, we talked about like a little bit of how even art history does not represent black and brown artists as much. I think you're like hitting the nail right on the head with that because of the factor that I think we've glossed over how the contributions of black and brown people uh, have been integral to the way that we view art and especially when it comes to that platform of self-expression. I can think about myself as a writer, like that is my platform when it comes to art and the connections that I have with James Baldwin and his writing style, even with Audre Lorde and her writing style, mm -hmm. and the relation to having two queer writers of color, also two queer black writers who uh, expressed themselves and also talked about social justice in their writing, talked about what it meant to be a black queer woman, a black queer man in America. Um, which I think is integral to what art is starting to look like now. You know, we're seeing more murals, we're seeing more um, artists speaking up and having their art forms really talk about what it is that's going on in our country. Yeah, and I think it's very interesting to like see the symbolism of like when you go to um, you know, the streets and you see all the visual art um, on the walls and stuff. Mm -hmm. Spatial power that gives black and brown people to be able to express themselves even though they're not allowed to. And I think that has, it's a huge part into how art plays a huge role into social justice movements. Mm -hmm. Like you see those art, like you can feel a connection to any kind of art piece that you see on the street and you can kind of like feel represented for a little bit yeah. and like feel as though you can walk those streets and take up that space. It tells a story. It definitely does. It pulls people in. It gives them something to believe in. It gives them hope. Uh, ultimately, if you see a piece of powerful art, it, it moves you. And I think that's essentially what art does is it, it conveys that feeling. And I think artists do that so well, especially with Miriam and the murals that she's worked on. I feel like her artwork does exactly that. It, it tells a story and the story of even her background itself, um, the artwork that is on her own body. I think all of it in different ways, it conveys the, it conveys, I think, a certain level of truth too. Mm -hmm. I think art has always spoken truth to whatever it is what's going on in the in that time period. And you cannot deny how a true artist true chooses to reclaim that space mm -hmm. and reclaim the stories that they're there to tell through their art, especially art and social justice work. I really like the point that you made earlier. It was very, very deep. But I think like artists, whatever they express can, is not a lie. So like that is so deep because you get to experience the truth of a person within their art piece and it's always aligned with what they feel internally whether or not they realize it even you know like me as an artist every time I've drawn or done anything kind of any kind of painting the feeling does come out and I didn't realize that it was portraying a specific type of emotion that I was feeling at the time and so that that was deep <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. I want to ask a question. So, like, I should have just asked the question. I hate when people say I want to ask a question instead of just asking the damn question. Uh, what is art to you? Like, what do you feel as though art is centrally to you? Um. So, and I, I've always been into henna art. Like, mm -hmm. you know about that. So, Mandy, um, otherwise known in Pakistan, known as Mandy. Um, not the kind of art that you see on the boardwalk, not like dolphins and monkeys and stuff like that, but more so like the traditional henna designs and stuff like that. It always brought me peace and mm -hmm. allowed me to kind of relax myself when I was feeling some kind of way. You know, there's a lot of things that happen in our life and you don't know how to compose yourself sometimes. And I think that being able to pick up a henna cone or a mandy cone and just start like drawing and it just almost like numbed me to everything else that was around me mm -hmm. so i could focus on um myself internally and it allowed me to become a better person so i wasn't just like lashing out every time i had an issue but um yeah it just allowed me to be expressive in a beautiful way instead of like using 
those energies and like um not growing from them so i thought that a lot so that's what art means to me and then plus like seeing people in the art industry right or not even industry and just like that whole realm it's just mm -hmm. beautiful because like again like you said earlier that's why i think it's so deep it's just like it's their truth and people yeah. what i've realized is like generationally we've moved from hiding our feelings to now slowly coming into vulnerabilities and like expressing those but art has always done that regardless of what kind of art form you chose you were always vulnerable with yourself and sat with yourself and that's why poetry i think is so deep and hits you in the heart yeah. because it means like you sat there and you thought about it and like no matter what kind of poet you think of so yeah i'm done i'm off my tangent but what does art mean to you I liked how you said the vulnerability piece because uh, I feel like essentially as a whole that's what art is like it is really expressing that vulnerable side like um, if you see someone who's a musician and they get extremely because we all get as artists I think there's always an artist who gets sensitive about their work mm -hmm. because it, it's, it takes a lot of vulnerability for you to put that out there and whatever platform your art style is um, you're ex always extremely sensitive as an artist um, but I think for me, art is about freedom because my platform of art has always been writing. It's also always been visual. Mm. Um, I um, am huge when it comes to movies and when it comes to TV and telling a story. Um, and it always takes me to a different plane, I guess, or a different mindset where I use my writing to escape what I'm uh, going through or what my reality is. And it then takes me to, I think, a place where I can be more open and more vulnerable and feel more so about what it is those characters are feeling in that certain moment in time. So I think that's what's always connected me more so to writing and video as my chosen um, art form that I express. But it's definitely about that, that freedom and telling a story and uh, seeing how people react to that story like if when someone else is is watching something i've created or read something i've created and being able to have that connection uh with someone else and have them say hey look i feel a relatability to that like that represents me and who i am as a person connecting to that representation that is so very lacking in art because art is a privilege uh, art schools are expensive and too often do our public schools not invest in arts, in the arts, mm -hmm. um, in all platforms of art because of it's seen as something that you you do as a hobby, as a side. Art cannot be invested in a career unless you have millions of dollars or people who are willing to give you scholarships and invest in you so that you can go to an art school um, and really trace that vision um, because it's, it's a talent. And I think too often black and brown people aren't exposed to the arts, um, even though black and brown people have done so much, so much for the arts and cultures um, in our history. Yeah. So I think it needs to be reclaimed. Yeah, and I think it all stems down to like the indigenous, you know, uh, peoples like it, we all have indigenous backgrounds. And so them like wanting to even in the most simplest of forms creating art within those you know small limitations but and that goes to show how much even in the current day when you don't have the equipment or whatever people are using they, they get so creative with it right like for a drum set instead of drums you're using bottles and yeah. like um boxes and stuff and that's so amazing right like you can't stop art from happening and i think sometimes that is taken for granted especially for black and brown people because it's easy to exploit you mm -hmm. could just take from them and then just kind of like sell your own mm -hmm. um and like w we know how art is exploited in the u.s with like black people black culture let's we'll talk about music we could talk about anything really and it's just exploited and so yeah, it's nice to see now and um, very slowly that we're starting to see that reclaiming and like giving those credits where credits are due because we can come back into like the TikTok realm or Instagram realm where there's no credit given to like dancers and musicians and like all this stuff because you could just 
copy paste copy paste copy mm -hmm. paste and then it's just gone out of the absolutely so shout out to all of our black and brown creatives out there we know that this world is hard for y'all um when all the different areas that it is that you create uh, so we are hoping that there will be a future uh, for black and brown creatives to get their flowers and get the money uh, and get the the privileges that they so very much deserve. So it's very good work that you're doing out there and we really, really do agree with it. Um, as you know that this mural wasn't your first mural. You've done murals before. Talk a little bit more about like what got you into painting murals in the first place. What got me painting murals in the first place was more of just seeing the impact it does for others. It doesn't matter what age, like what background, like it just gravitates for those who are going through things. It lights up their day. And, you know, I get emotional talking about this because I know how it feels when you're going through tribulations. It's like, what other things can brighten up your day? You've always seen things all the time. And it's like life is changing. And then when you see a piece that like, wow, I don't care if it's just like a little percentage of something that made you smile. That's what I want to be a part of. I might not even not get to, like, I don't even know you. But if I can at least do something that can help you positive, like positively, I want to do that. So my art is, is more about it's not about me it's all about seeing god through me so i want others to see that you know we can definitely make a difference even if we don't know each other listen to miriam's full interview on the anchor podcast link provided in the description below and become a monthly supporter and because i'm horrible at reading lines um, I'm going to look down and read my line. She talks about empowerment through art, the importance of coming together with the same goal, and creating connectivity through art. Thank you so much, Miriam Morin, for sharing your story with us. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. She stole my line. <laughs> and, and comment below. Comment. <laughs> Until next time. She was just dying. <laughs>